at Arrowhead in Kansas City, a hot and humid 77 degree day. One of the stirring scenes in the National Football League, the usual sea of red greeting the hometown Chiefs, winners of the AFC West last season. And they open up against Chan Gailey's Buffalo Bills. Chan in his second season as the head coach of Buffalo. One-time offensive coordinator here in Kansas City on the staff of Todd Haley, who's in his third season as the head coach of the Chiefs. And Rich, Kansas City won the toss. They will receive. Yeah, and a big story this preseason, Marv, has been the, the change in the kickoff, the ball being placed now at the 35-yard line. Also, no member of the kicking team can be lined up more than five yards behind the restraining line. Really, the big reason for the rule change is all about player safety. The league's hoping the change will have an input on the, the number of injuries. Although we saw some sensational returns this past Thursday night in the game between Green Bay and uh, New Orleans in the opener, that not the case, as you mentioned, in preseason. It was a touchback festival because of one of those uh, NFL new rules. Ryan Lindell will kick it away to that Matt Dester McCluster. There is Lindell in his 12th season out of Washington State. Kansas City 0-4 in preseason. They had a very poor exhibition slate. Buffalo at one up and, and three down. And this one is taken out of the hop on McCluster. To the 15. And is able to bring it across the 25. And they have put the ball on the ground. Buffalo feels that they have recovered. Dexter McCluster, second-year player out of Ole Miss, second-round pick last year. And last season was used as a receiver. He is going to be coming out of the running back position, and he coughed it up. Kevin Shepard on the recovery. Well, they've had a problem putting the ball on the ground in the preseason. Keep an eye on Corey McIntyre. He makes the big hit. It gets out on the ground. I mean, this is how you want to start a game, and you're concerned about special teams in the preseason. A lot of rookies and first-year players covering kicks. They don't have the experience. We saw a mistake already. So the Bills, from their, from the 26 in Kansas City territory, you see Ryan Fitzpatrick for the first time in a seven-year NFL career, opens the season as the starting quarterback. The running back is Fred Jackson. Jackson, an underrated running back last year, just under 1,000 yards. A break for the Bills here at the start. Fitzpatrick fires incomplete. Pass intended for Roscoe Parrish. And a penalty marker is down. The referee is Scott Green in his 21st NFL season. Interference, defense, number 50. Ball will be placed at the spot of foul. First down. It is called on linebacker Justin Houston. Yeah, we're going to see some... A good sense for what Buffalo is going to do offensively. Come out, spread you out, empty, no backfield set. Chan Gill, they got the sense of visiting with them last night. They want to pick their spots in terms of their ability to run the football. I think they want to spread out this defense and attack them early. Hills for the first down at the Kansas City 23-yard line. Ryan Fitzpatrick in a seventh season out of Harvard. Goes to the inside handoff. This is Jackson. Does so well breaking tackles. Able to work his way inside the 15-yard line. A look at the Bills up front and the major question mark at left tackle. Demetrius Bell struggled in the preseason. Three-year man from Northwestern State. Look at the running backs and receivers. And we talked about the co-captain, Fred Jackson. Remains in the lineup. It's a second down and one. Jackson changing directions, broke a tackle, and has a first down inside the 10. He's met by the inside linebacker, Javon Belcher. Well, you know what you're going to get with, with Fred Jackson. I mean, he's just a, a very patient runner. See, they run the stretch play off the left side. He's solid and he's consistent. Without question, the best offensive player last year. Very good speed, and you combine that with his receiving skills out of the backfield, you have a complete back. And a Kansas City 
defender is hurt. Looks to be the strong safety, Eric Berry. A first round pick last year. Had an excellent rookie season, making it to the, the Pro Bowl. We'll take a break. We'll be back to Kansas City in a moment. Back in Kansas City, first and goal at the nine for the Buffalo Bills. And the snap is fumbled. Fred Jackson was the in intended receiver of that uh, snap. And then the quarterback, Fitzpatrick, able to recover. Boy, you hate to see this, the quarterback center exchange. You got a new center this year, Eric Wood. He did play in four games last year, but he predominantly played guard. This should never happen. They work on this day one in training camp, quarterback center exchange, particularly in this part of the field. Donald Jones split wide to the right, Stevie Johnson to the left. Jackson, the running back, takes the handoff, little stutter step, gets inside the five-yard line. He's so effective at breaking tackles, kind of glides his way. He's very smooth, Marv, as you mentioned. And I think what we're seeing, that Buffalo's going to try and spread out this Kansas City defense. I don't think they want to pack them in and try and run the ball. I think they want to pick their spots, and they want to run out of one back. Three and four wide receiver sets. Jan Gailey feels that's the best way to attack this Kansas City front seven. And you saw a shot of the strong safety. Eric Berry, such an important guy in the defensive alignment of the Chiefs. Back on the field. It's a third and goal at the four. Fitzpatrick works out of the shotgun. Takes a long look. He fires. Touchdown. The tight end, Scott Chandler. In his third year out of Iowa, he towers at six foot seven and comes up with a touchdown catch. Well, he's a big target, Marv, as you mentioned. This is what they're looking for. More production out of the tight end spot. Just going to turn up and run a little hit. Six foot seven, big target for Ryan Fitzpatrick. And as I said before, they need more production out of this group. Ryan Lindell will attempt the extra point. We're talking about the lack of production at the tight end position. In fact, before chatting with Chan Gailey yesterday, I and mean, then you quickly ended the conversation when Chan entered the room as he said, what's happening here at tight end? Until they find one, they're going to work with what they have. But I like, I like the start. Really nice play by Chandler. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. The new 70-inch class LCD TV from Sharp. And by the award-winning 2012 Fiat 500. Learn more at fiatusa.com. 7-0 Buffalo on the first NFL touchdown for the tight end, Scott Chandler. Now Ryan Lindell will kick it to Dexter McCluster, who fumbled on his first kickoff return of the opening kickoff. A little hesitant to get out of the end zone, and then changed his mind, and a nice return across the 20 as a flag comes flying. The indecision will get you every time, and you've got to decide to take that ball early. You're struggling to get back to the 20-yard line. We talked about... 40% resulted in touchbacks and preseason kickoffs compared with just 17% last season. See Todd Haley not at all happy with the start. You work so hard, you script your first 15 plays. You talk about getting off to a good start, particularly here at home. And in a much discussed decision, and we will see how they work it out on this first possession for Kansas City. Todd Haley revealed this past week. There are two fouls on the play holding Kansas City during the re return. Personal foul grabbing the face mask on the tackle. By rule, the ball will be spotted at the spot of Kansas City's foul. First down. Getting back to that to that point, we'll take a look at the, the face mask, but Offensive coordinator Bill Muir will be calling the plays, sending them in through the quarterback's coach, Jim Zorn. Now, Muir is upstairs. Zorn is downstairs. And the head coach, Todd Kelly, Kelly is also involved in sending plays in to Matt Castle. How, how is that going to well, work? Well, I'm concerned. And you mentioned Bill Muir, Marv. He's done it as an offensive line coach for 33 years, but he's never called plays. Jim Zorn 
he's new to the organization. There's terminology and verbiage completely different for him as well. All right, they start out from the 12, and Hassel able to complete. Ronald Pope, the tight end, not noted for his past catching ability, stopped by the free safety, Jarris Bird. Leonard Pope is starting for the injured Tony Moriaki, who had a superb rookie year with 47 receptions. Well, they love play action. They run the ball so well on the early downs that sometimes they like to change it up and go with some play action to see the, the naked. Leonard Pope needs to have a big year. Marv, you mentioned no Tony Moyaki. I think that's a big loss for this offense. He was very good in, in, in the red zone, working the middle of the field in third down situations. He created some mismatches versus linebackers and safeties. I think that's a big loss for the Chiefs. Terrence McGee is, is down, he's shaken up. Now you see Tony Moyaki and how well he played as a rookie last year. He gives you speed at that position and some athleticism. I think Matt Castle really had a comfort level with Tony Moyaki that he doesn't have with Leonard Pope. I did say Moyaki, it was, it was done in a very unusual manner just a moment ago. I caught it. Yes, yes you did. I yes. caught it, partner. It is, and Marvin, as I mentioned, it is great to be alongside you and welcome to CBS. Uh, I am really looking forward to a great year of football. Thanks, Rich. I, I appreciate it. As one who followed your career as a child, it is a thrill <laughs> to, be, to be in the same broadcast. 17 league. years isn't that long. And you spent some time here I in, did. in four, Kansas four City. I did. Four great years. This is an unbelievable place to play football. All right, here is the pitch. Jamal Charles looks to make the turn, and he does, but took a pretty good shot over the far side. Nick Barnett on the stop, picked up four on the play. Did, did Charles, as we check out the offensive line, very solid last season for KC into the final two games, and anchored by Casey Wickman, the, the center. And there is Dwayne Bow. last season, led the Chiefs with 72 catches, 15 touchdowns. And he is the feature receiver. Castle to throw, and it's overthrown. Intended for Terrence Copper. Now look at the Bills with that new alignment up front. First round pick, third overall in the draft out of Alabama, and the Bills are so high on Marcel Darius. The linebackers. Sean Merriman could be the key. Does he have anything left after his sensational career with San Diego? How about Jarris Bird, the free safety, made the Pro Bowl as a rookie two years ago. Different story last year. His uh, play not the same. Castle in trouble, and down he goes. And Kansas City fans have to be concerned. Whenever there's a crowd around Matt Castle, they have to be thinking about those injured ribs, although the Chiefs have downplayed it all week. Yeah, but he did, he did practice. But you are concerned. You're right, Marv. This is not good, and you've watched preseason too much of this. The quarterback was hit a lot. He was on the ground. The pass protection, not where it needs to be. So, Dustin Colquitt back to punt. Roscoe Parrish awaits it. Inside his 20-yard line, Parrish comes up for it and lets it bounce. 46-yard punt when we come back. Buffalo returns to the offense. We've been talking about the rib problems suffered by Kansas City quarterback uh, Matt Castle. Now, you've had rib problems in the past. I know you carry a football with always, you. Always. I always carry a football. Yeah. And, you know, throwing the football is about creating velocity. It's not always with the arm. A lot of it's with your core strength. A lot of twisting and turning that goes on. And that's really where Matt Castle could have the issues today. That's where we could see some irritation with the cartilage and ribs. We know about his pain threshold. Here's a guy that played 10 days after an emergency appendectomy surgery last year. There's no one tougher than Matt Castle. Buffalo starting out at their 24-yard line. And they go to the ground. Fred Jackson, the ball carry. I would think that also can affect how you call cadence. It really does. You think about, the, you know, as you generate uh, from your, you have to expand and really from uh, your diaphragm to be able to get the words out. You know, and I, what we were talking off the air, Marv, about my issues with rib injuries. I spent some time in a hyperbaric chamber during the course of the week just so I could play on Sunday. 
And it looks like Eric Berry is hurt once again. We'll get back to that uh, hyperbaric chamber a little later on. <laughs> Buffalo Bills back to the line for the second down and three up there. 31. The quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick swings it out. C.J. Spiller bringing across the 30. Five yard line, Javon Belcher, the inside linebacker, making the tackle. And Eric Berry has not had a good start. You see at the top of your screen there, Stevie Johnson gets it started with a nice cut here, but that's really where the first issue was. This one he does on his own. You look top left of your screen here, you just see that left left knee. He goes down. They cannot afford to lose a player like Eric Berry, Pro Bowler, a year ago. He's replaced by John McGraw, 10 year man out of Kansas State. A lone setback is Fred Jackson. First down for the Bill. Jackson off the handoff. And he is bottled up. Tom Holly, John McGraw combined on the tackle. It's fun talking with Ryan Fitzpatrick, seven-year quarterback out of Harvard, who says, you know, I picked the only profession in the world where my Harvard degree worked against me. <laughs> in effect, an Ivy League quarterback might not be taken seriously, and there's certainly a question about the level of competition that he faced in his college days. And he bounced around a bit for the first time. He is the starting quarterback right at the beginning of the season. It's Patrick throwing downfield, deflected and nearly picked off. Pass intended for David Nelson. I loved your comments. And when you asked him, Marv, last night about when he realized that he had a chance to play in the National Football League, we were kidding him about, was it was it after his junior year? You look at some of these great Ivy League quarterbacks. You know some of these guys, Marv. Well, Sid Luckman was before my time, but there are about 15 to 20 quarterbacks who have made it out of the Ivy League who showed you the most notable Third down, and now uh, look out. Fitzpatrick took the pop, and that is incomplete. Catch made out of bounds by Stevie Johnson as they were coming on Ryan Fitzpatrick. Javier Arenas were putting the pressure on. Yeah, you look to his left, you're going to see Javier Arenas. He comes off the edge clean, and Ryan Fitzpatrick needs an extra second. That's a ball that Stevie Johnson usually makes on the boundary. Protection is going to be key today for the Bills. Brian Borman is back to punt and a beauty as Arenas lets it sail over his head and into the end zone. That's a 63 yard punt from Borman. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Buffalo with a 7 0 lead on Kansas City. We approach the halfway point of this first quarter. There's Eric Ferry, the outstanding, strong safety for the Kansas City Chiefs, headed back to the block room. We do not have a, an official report on the injury. Chiefs from their 20-yard line is Castle off the roll. Incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Leonard Pope. So that's the uh, second time that Castle has looked for the six-foot-eight Pope. Yeah, they're trying to... A lot of play action on first down. I'm looking over here to my left. Just four rushing yards. We're halfway through the first quarter. This is not what Todd Haley anticipated getting behind in the game. They wanted, this is an offense that is absolutely committed to running the football. They have not been able to do that so far today. And Rich, we're talking about the number one rushing team of a year ago. The combination of Jamal Charles and, and Thomas Jones both had outstanding seasons. Second down and 10. And it is Charles. Jamal Charles in his fourth season out of Texas. Ran for nearly 1,500 yards a year ago. And we're told Terrence McGee, the starting left corner for the Bills, will not return today. We saw him go down just moments ago as they pulled hamstring. Third down and seven. Castle swings it out. Charles trying to make a move, could not, and the Chiefs 
are hearing it from the crowd early on. Not surprised, Marv. They've really struggled this preseason. They have not looked sharp. Matt Castle has struggled. The pass protection hasn't been good. There's just no continuity right now when you watch this operation. Just try and kick this ball wide. They don't even block Jairus Bird. He is right there to make the play. They've got to find their rhythm. So Colquitt with his second punt. Parrish is back. And it's off the side of his foot. A short punt. This is not a happy crowd here at Arrowhead. Just a 27-yard punt by Colquitt. Here's a word about a, a special auction being held by the NFL to benefit 9-11 charities. Autographed game-worn jerseys from today's games, along with the game ball and other unique NFL items will be auctioned to raise money for Tuesday's children and my good deed. Visit NFL.com slash auction to do it today to bid on items. Well, Buffalo back in possession at the Kansas City 44. They have a 7-0 lead just under seven minutes to go in this opening quarter. Jackson looking to go wide. Nice cut. And is chasing the ball out of bounds picked up seven on the play pushed out by the inside linebacker Derek Johnson who last year led the Chiefs in total tackles I thought he was the most improved player a year ago Derek Johnson and they need more big plays from him he led the team in tackles see there 122 tackles through 12 games they need to see the sacks they need more sacks Tom Holly 14 and a half a year ago the rest of the defense not the production there. They've got to get pressure on the quarterback. Stevie Johnson to the left. Donald Jones to the right. Second and short. Fitzpatrick looking right. It is scooped up and it is incomplete. Ball took a hop. Intended for Roscoe Parrish in the right flat. Well, Chan Gailey told us he knows what the problem is. It's Tom Bahali. Now we just got to be able to solve it. You see Demetrius Bell right there. There was some talk that he may not start this game at left tackle. He has really struggled through the preseason. They need a big day from him. You've got to have an answer for Tom Bahali. Chan Gailey said it, whether it's putting the tight end over there, whether it's helping with the back or sliding with the line, we can't let Tom Bahali spend time in our backfield. Crowd is up, urging on the Chiefs defensive unit for this third down at about four. Fitzpatrick. A leaping attempt, but he caught it out of bounds. So Fitzpatrick has misfired on his last four. It was intended for David Nelson, who made the good try using his six foot five against the smaller defender. Well, you do a nice job here on Tom Bahali. Wallace Gilbert is just going to come off. Be careful with that, that hand to the face. Got to keep him on the playing field. I think it's going to be really important for these receivers. We know what they have in Stevie Johnson. They, they traded Lee Evans a couple weeks ago. These young receivers, the second and third receivers, Donald Jones, David Nelson, they need to step up. And here's Brian Mormon, who unleashed a 62-yarder in his first punt attempt. Arenas calls for the fair catch at the 14-yard line. Will step away with six minutes, nine seconds left. In the first, Buffalo with a seven. Well, you see how productive Kansas City was rushing the football a year ago, just seven yards today. Buffalo talked all week about stopping the run. They've been able to do that so far today. A lot more play action. You see good look at George Edwards, a defensive coordinator. It all starts with stopping the run against this Kansas City offense. Jamal Charles, Dexter McCluster. All the running backs, that's McCluster in motion as the Chiefs start out at their 14. They're trailing the Bills, 7-0. And it is Jamal Charles with a short pickup. About three on the carry. Sean Merriman made the stop. Sean Merriman has battled through knee, calf, and foot injuries leading to San Diego waving him the Bills signed him last November well a few seasons ago he was one of the premier outside linebackers in the game but injuries have kind of taken their cult their toll and 
certainly the Bills are counting on him to spark the pass rush. This is not good to see. You hope it's just a stinger for Sean Merriman. Second down and seven from the 17 yard line. Little flip out to Bowl. Met by the right corner, Leotis McKelvin. Wayne Bow last season led the NFL with 15 touchdown receptions, which is also a Chiefs franchise record. Only three on that pickup. It'll be a third down and four as we come up on five minutes left in this first quarter. Yeah, you get a good look at Bill Muir calling the plays. The offensive line coach, offense quarter. He calls him down to Jim Zorn, who's new to the staff, who then calls him in to Matt Castle, and of course, as we see Todd Haley there, he can trump any call. He's, he's listening in as well. But how does that work with so many voices? Oh, nearly a terrific one-handed grab by Bo. Well, Not able to hang on. Well, Marv, you bring up a great point. You know, essentially for the third straight season, Matt Castle has someone different in his ear. He's going to give Dwayne Bo opportunities down the field. But for the third straight season, Matt Castle has a different play caller in his ear. First, it was Todd Haley. Last year, it was Charlie Weiss. And this year, it's Jim Zorn. And that's very unsettling to a quarterback. Jim Zorn, the one-time head coach of the Washington Redskins. An excellent quarterback. Ten years with Seattle. Beautiful punt. And uh, Paris looked like he was going to call for a fair catch. And then beautiful coverage. He's taken down back behind the... 25-yard line by Demario Williams, a 58-yard punt, and just a four-yard return. Premiering this Wednesday on CBS, two all-time favorite castaways return for a brand new season of the wildest survivor ever. Wednesday only, CBS. Mark Albert, Rich Cannon, we are in Arrowhead in Kansas City, Missouri. Opening Sunday of this 2011 NFL season. Buffalo Bills jumping on the Kansas City Chiefs with the early lead. And the worst rushing defense in the league a year ago to this point has not had any difficulty at all with the best rushing offense in the NFL last season. Fred Jackson is the, the feature back, Fitzpatrick. Looking to throw deep, couldn't find anyone, and then slides out to the 28-yard line, covered up by the linebacker Cameron Sheffield. And right here, we'll go to our studios in New York for an update. Hey, Marvin Rich, life without Peyton Manning. Well, he only fumbled twice last year in 16 games. Kerry Collins has already fumbled twice in one game. He's also been sacked. And the route is on in Houston as the Texans take a 17-0 lead. Back as we welcome to the fold Marv Albert and, of course, Rich Gannon. Thank you, Boomer. Boomer Esiason sharing matters today with uh, J.B. C.J. Spiller had nowhere to go. John McGraw, who came on for Eric Berry, Made the tackle. C.J. Spiller, a first-round pick last year, ninth overall out of Clemson after a sensational college career. So much more was expected, but he did not have much help and did not have a very good season. No, I think more expected of him after a difficult rookie season. He failed to produce a rushing touchdown and a run longer than 20 yards. Big thing with him, consistency. Not only in terms of the assignments, but certainly pass protection as well. And now Brad Smith has come on. He's the Wildcat. But this time he's uh, working out of the slot as David Nelson able to make the catch for pickup of a nine on the play. Brad Smith, who was signed as a, a free agent from the Jets, who wanted to re-sign him. He's a combination quarterback, running back, wide receiver, kick returner. And so effective out of that Wildcat formation. And you've got to have a plan anytime Brad Smith is in the game. You know, Romeo Cornell put together a package when he was with the Jets. They've spent time looking at it. They've spent time talking about it in the meeting room. And they have spent time working on it in the practice field. And now he's in a quarterback. This is Smith looking for an opening. And cannot find it. Tombe Holly was right there to make the stop. You think about the preparation it takes in the Wildcat. 
Brad Smith, a former Missouri quarterback. Usually it's run when he's in this formation, but certainly you have to prepare for it as well. Not a lot of openings there. A little indecisive from Brad Smith. Second down and 10 for Buffalo at their 38, just under two minutes remaining in this first quarter. And now Ryan Fitzpatrick is back as the conventional quarterback and lost one that is caught. David Nelson with a first down and more. Beautiful pass from Fitzpatrick and that is good for 35 yards. Savvy Piscatelli covering on the play. And that's what you want. You want the receiver matched up on the safety. Savvy Piscatelli takes an aggressive angle, tries to undercut that, but a perfect throw here by Ryan Fitzpatrick gets it. David Nelson having a nice day, running some good crisp routes for his quarterback. Second reception for Nelson. There he is. Second year man out of University of Florida. First and 10 at the 27. Kansas City character. Here's Fitzpatrick throwing. It's caught. Touchdown. Stevie Johnson with the leaping catch in the corner of the end zone. And the Buffalo Bills have taken a 13-0 lead. It's a 27-yard pass play. And you, you, we talked to Ryan Fitzpatrick last night. What is the last thing he said to us? I want to give my receivers some opportunities, some chances to make plays down the field. Not really that bad of coverage from Brandon Flowers. Look how high Stevie Johnson gets up for that ball. I love the fact that he gave him an opportunity. Boy, the Bills really showed some faith in Ryan Fitzpatrick by not drafting a quarterback, and he's taken advantage of it. Ryan Lindell able to line drive at home. Stevie Johnson, last season, 82 catches, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, and the boos continue here in Kansas City with 55 seconds to play in this first quarter. Well, the Chiefs have to get something going offensively. They, they fumble the opening kickoff, and then they go three straight possessions where they have to punt the football. Stevie Johnson, what a, what a great year a year ago. After just 12 catches in his first two years, he has that breakout campaign where he has 82 catches and 10 touchdowns. And what I like about Ryan Fitzpatrick, a little bit of a risk taker. He's not afraid to try and fit one in there every once in a while. He also gets himself in trouble on occasion, but he's got a lot of confidence in his receivers. And Rich, that's usually one of the louder crowds in the NFL. It's opening day for the Kansas City Chiefs, and this crowd has been taken out. It's amazing, and that's really what you want to do when you come into a place like this. I always think it's important for a visiting team to come in, take care, take the crowd out of it early. The way you do that is you get out, get an early lead, and this is, has really been a, a big difference. The other thing that's important is, is the, 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 how they've handled things offensively. The silent snap count has worked for them. They've used multiple personnel groups. They've really forced this Kansas City defense to make some adjustments on the fly. Javier Arenas, Dexter McCluster are back awaiting the kick from Lindell. The Bills with a 14-0 lead. And Arenas plays it deep in the end zone, and he will stay right there. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Well, Wednesday on Showtime, J.D., Chris Collinsworth, Bill Sims, Warren Sapp are back and ready to roll on inside the... NFL every Wednesday night on Showtime. Chiefs start out at their 20-yard line. Matt Castle last season throwing for 27 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. Sack number dropped down, and he made it to the Pro Bowl for the for the very first time. This is Jamal Charles able to make the turn. Picks up the first down and additional yardage. Best run of the game. Really Jamal tough. Charles going to the outside and picking up 22 run out by the strong safety Brian Scott. And we asked Nick Barnett, what is the run you have to stop? And he said it's the stretch play or the bounce play. They want to get Jamal Charles on the edge where he can use his speed. You've got to contain this back. You've got to force him back up inside. 
Kansas City first down at their 42. This first quarter winding down. On a delay. Not much there. Charles stopped at the line by the combination of the nose tackle, Kyle Williams, and the outside linebacker, Chris Kelsey. Boy, Kyle Williams is a, is a really good player in the middle of that defense. He's got that non-stop motor. He was kind of the one bright spot for this defense a year ago. He's really going to help the young pup, I think, Marcel Darius, who's going to line up to his right. It's always important to have a veteran in that defensive meeting room. And that is the end of the first quarter. Buffalo with a 14-0 lead over Kansas City. We'll be back in KC after these messages. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Well, Marv, we talked about the, the importance of starting field position. Look where the Chiefs have started. The rule change has already been a, a, certainly a factor in this one. And then look at the result. Four-play drive, three-play drive, three-play drive, and punt. Three-play drives are demoralizing to an offense. Matt Castle, just three of six, 11 yards. Second quarter underway, second and 10. Kansas City at its 42-yard line. Now out of the gun, Castle, he has the cluster, and he's taken down just shy of the midfield Castle, mark. Castle. Nick Barnett, the weak side linebacker, on the stop, an advance of six. Yeah, when you see Dexter McCluster in the backfield, he's in there for a reason. They moved him to, from, from wide receiver to running back. He's not in there to block. He's a liability at 5'8", 170 pounds. Very good as a screen and draw runner. And, of course, they like to find ways to get him out of the backfield matched up on those linebackers. Third down and four. So Todd Haley going with the double tight end alignment. Leonard Pope, Jake O'Connell. Play fake by Castle. It was bobbled and caught for a first down by Jake O'Connell, the backup tight end. Barnett caught him from behind. It's a 15-yard pickup on the pass play. Really nice job by Matt Castle. He's actually trying to trying to get Jamal Charles up the boundary. And what's going to happen is, is after he doesn't get Charles O'Connell, he's working across the formation. He just sneaks out into the flat. And Matt Castle gives him one he can get. Inside handoff to Thomas Jones, who carries for the first time. Marcel Darius, the rookie out of Alabama, making the stop just a yard. To Jones, how about Jake O'Connell on that catch? It's only his sixth of his NFL career, primarily a blocking tight end. Well, that's what they have right now without Tony Moyaki. You've got Jake O'Connell, more of an inline player, as is Leonard Pope, just trying to find some creative ways to get them some catches. Second down and nine. Castle looking right, has an open man, has a first down. Dwayne Cole on the reception for 15. Well, too much cushion there from Leotis McKelvin. Nice, good anticipation by Matt Castle, and I really like Dwayne Bow. I thought he really came on last year. He's got that great combination of size and strength and speed. With the 15 touchdowns a year ago, I think he certainly on the edge of becoming a upper echelon player at his position. Kansas City at the Buffalo 21, easily their best drive of this first half. Charles has not been able to get going to this point. Picked up three, met by Chris Kelsey, the outside linebacker. Well, we're seeing so much of a, an emphasis from Buffalo to try and stop the run. You see Bill Muir there on your right, the play call. They're having extra defenders down around the line of scrimmage. You see Jim Zorn calling them into Matt Castle. This takes extra time, four, five, six seconds on every play. I always prefer to have the play caller on the sidelines. Castle throwing in zone. Touchdown. The official waited to make certain that Leonard Pope was inbound, the tight end on a 19-yard pass play. Castle to Pope, and the Chiefs are on the board. What a great catch by Leonard Pope. This is the benefit of having a six-foot-eight tight end. Really a nice throw by Matt Castle. Watch that left leg, that knee. Looks like that gets in. He gets that in before
And apparently they will look at it. One of the new NFL rules where in the replay booth they will check every touchdown eligible for both uh, for booth review, referees can uh, use their discretion to take another look, which can save the coaches, obviously, from using a challenge the way Absolutely. it did, did occur in the past. I think it's going to count, and I'll tell you why. I think his left toe comes down before his left knee. Watch the left toe right there. That actually hits in the field of play before... That knee comes down. And as you mentioned, Marv, replay officials will initiate the reviews of all scoring plays throughout the game. I like the rule change. I think it helps these coaches. I know there's certain coaches that don't like it. The other thing you got to watch is does he actually maintain possession of the ball through the ground? It looks like that ball is coming out. You get so caught up in watching whether he got that left foot in bounds. Clearly, he doesn't catch it cleanly. And then as he goes to the ground, Looks like he's bobbling, juggling that ball. And if he doesn't have possession of it at that point, they will not give him a touchdown. You know, there are some who have complained about the extra delays, but you want to get it right. And in the past, without review, although this would have been challenged by a coach, yeah, I think but what prior to the concept of the challenge, this might have been called a touchdown. Right, the other thing you worry about, if it's late in the game and a, and a, a coach doesn't have a challenge left, you see it's going to... Jairus Bird's fortunate that his right shin actually is what helps get that ball out on the ground. And you're going to see right there, just keep an eye on the ball. That's going to hit the ground. And that's going to be the problem right there for the Chiefs. That's really important for the Kansas City Chiefs not to lose their poise. You're down 14 After 6 at home. Play, the receiver did not maintain possession of the ball on contact with the ground. The pass is ruled incomplete. It'll be third down on the 19-yard line. And now you're down. Now you're down 14, nothing at home, and you've got to be poised. See right there, he's really struggling to maintain possession of that ball. It clearly comes out, and then he tries to gather it back in. The official right there to make the call. Crowd is booing, but that was the correct call after looking at the at the review so the ball is placed back at the 19 yard line in buffalo territory it's a third down and eight for the chiefs well, it's going to be important i think for todd hale to control his emotions sometimes he gets the best of them castle out of the shotgun being chased and he was tripped up second Sack of the game for the Bills. Well, Kyle Williams. You're going to see Jeremy Urban. They actually drop him. He's wide open. Matt Castle looking for Dwayne Bow on the crosser. Another big play by Kyle Williams in the middle of that defense. The 13-yard loss and... Kansas City will attempt a 49-yarder. This is Ryan Suckup with a long attempt. It is no good. Ryan Suckup last season, 20 for 26, his career-long 53, and not able to connect from 49. It was wide right. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by DirecTV. This season, NFL Sunday ticket is included when you switch. Cadillac. And by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report, join JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and... Coach Bill Cowher for all the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. First and 10 for the Bills at their 31-yard line. We saw Brad Smith come in on the Wildcat a moment ago, did pick up the first down. Rich, from the point of view of a pro-style quarterback like yourself, would you be bothered by the Wildcat concept? You know, here's Smith coming in and 
Ryan Fitzpatrick splits out as a wide receiver, ends up as a running back. Does it take the quarterback out of rhythm? I think mean, you have to be careful when you do it. I, I think if, if anything that will help the offense move the foot, move the chains, and score more points, I'm all for it. Well, here's Fitzpatrick back, and he completes as a first down. Again, he goes to the tight end, Scott Chandler. And it's a 13-yard pickup, Justin Houston, the outside linebacker, making the stop. I am convinced that Todd Haley had a sit-down with Scott Chandler last night and said that that production crew from CBS was asking about the tight end position. And Scott Chandler has really done well. He's beat these linebackers. He's beat the safeties. He's a big target. And he's running some really good routes. And Chan Gilly is continuing going back to him. First down at the... 18. Fitzpatrick out of the shotgun formation, hands it off. Jackson makes the cut, gets to the 10. Javier Arenas comes up from the right corner to make the stop. Jackson goes for eight. How about Fred Jackson? He has worked his way from the Sioux City Bandits of the United Indoor Football League, NFL Europe, to the Bills practice squad to being their number one back. Yeah, he's really taken advantage, you said, of the opportunity. And I don't know that he gets enough respect for what he does in this offense. He really does it all. He runs, he blocks, he catches. That's one of the things that Ryan Fitzpatrick said. He's our best blocker in third down situations. Second and about two at the 10. Spiller back on the field. C.J. Spiller. Stopped by Cameron Sheffield. And lost a yard on that play. C.J. Spiller is going to have to earn his reps in this offense. You, know, you, you ask yourself, what's his role going to be? He struggled with ball security and pass protection last year. I think he's one of the players that was really hurt by the fact that there wasn't an offseason program. We usually see a lot of improvement from year one to year two, but no offseason, I, th I thought, really hurt, it, hurt a player like C.J. Spiller. Buffalo looking at a third down and three at the 11. Jackson returns to the backfield. Fitzpatrick with a bullet incomplete. Intended for Stevie Johnson. Well, that's a throw that Ryan Fitzpatrick absolutely has to make. He recognizes the pressure. Does, just doesn't do a good job setting his feet and making a good accurate throw. You see the pressure comes up the middle. He's got Stevie Johnson now. Just put it on him. Give him a chance to make this play. You cannot miss that throw. Here is Ryan Lindell with an angle to the right attempting from 29 yards out. Last season attempted only 21 field goals. Hit 16, that's the kind of year it was for Buffalo. And this one is right through. 6.45 left, first half. The Bills with a surprising 17-0 lead here in Kansas City. Nice start for the 28-year-old out of Harvard, Ryan Fitzpatrick. His Bills with a 17-0 lead. Nine plays, 50 yards. They had the ball for five minutes, leading to the 29-yard field goal by Lindell, who will kick it away. Arenas comes up for it. Javier Arenas trying to cut away from the pursuit and brings up to the 17. Well, if you're Dexter McCluster, this is not what you were hoping to, to do in terms of starting the season off by putting the ball on the ground on the opening kickoff. They have not looked good offensively. They've been out of rhythm, just, just missing some throws. You see Matt Castle. He doesn't look completely comfortable. Ryan Suckup, usually pretty good from this, from this distance. He misses a kick, and, of course, Todd Haley losing his patience. They've got to get something going here offensively before the half. This is Charles, Jamal Charles, on the hand up. And may have lost the football. He did, and Buffalo on the recovery. We saw in the final preseason game against Green Bay, Jamal Charles had difficulty, a couple of fumbles, putting it on the ground, and he looks like Leotis McKelvin came up with that uh, lost ball. Well, big hit from the safety, George Wilson. Leotis McKelvin right there to make the play. As you said, Marv, Jamal Charles has had a history of this. Putting the ball on the ground. Ball security. Running back up inside. Doesn't see George Wilson 
until the end. You go back, we talked about the preseason. The last preseason game against the Green Bay Packers, twice inside the red zone, he put the ball on the ground. And I was at practice on Friday. Every time he touched the ball, Todd Haley said, take care of the football. Boy, you just can't start games this way if you're the Kansas City Chiefs. It'll be Buffalo back in possession at the Kansas City. 21. A Buffalo Bills team that last year lost their first eight games. They finished at 4 and 12. And apparently the the challenge flag has been thrown. We'll be back with that in a moment. All right, here's the referee, Scott Green, off the challenge by Todd Haley. The ruling on the field stands. Buffalo's ball, first and ten. Kansas City is charged with a timeout. Haley contending that he was down. Yeah, the problem is there, you, you know, you go back and you look at all the different replays. This is such a scrum that you can't really tell where the ball comes out. I was looking at Jamal Charles' left shoulder as it comes down, but you can't tell at that point whether or not the ball is already out on the ground. We looked at it from three or four different angles and see a pile of humanity. You can never really get a sense for where the ball comes out. So that the third start for Buffalo inside Kansas City territory. Fred Jackson in the backfield. And Fitzpatrick able to complete. No, he's out of bounds. The catch was made by Donald Jones, but out of bounds. Well, I love the fact that they're being aggressive. They're taking some shots. Ryan Fitzpatrick's missed on a couple couple of throws. This is a throw. It's a tough catch by Donald Jones, but boy, it just seems like they're just a little bit. See how that ball sails on him a little bit? I think you've got to put a you got to put that one on the line. Throw that on the back shoulder. Aaron Rodgers. We saw a lot of that out of Aaron Rodgers in the preseason, and also in that game against New Orleans. That's got to be on a rope. Second and ten at the twenty-one yard line. Jackson trying to make the turn. Run out by Brandon Carr, the, the right corner. What a start for the Buffalo Bills. So many questions coming in concerning could they contain the, the run of the Kansas City Chiefs? The departure of Lee Evans with Donald Jones now, the starter at, at wideout. On the 20-yard line. Well, they've really taken advantage of some turnovers and field position, and that's really what this game's all about. Third down and nine. Now Jones to the right, Johnson left. Fitzpatrick throwing for Jones, and it's broken up. Brandon Flowers, the left corner, able to slap it away. Well, we talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick being a bit of a risk taker. He's going to try and fit this one in between the corner and the safety. And as you see right there, there's the corner, and here comes the safety over the top. Two deep man-to-man -man coverage. You cannot make this throw. Ryan Fitzpatrick, very fortunate that Donald Jones knocked that one out. So the field goal unit is back, back on. This will be a 38-yard attempt for Ryan Lindello, hit from 29. And this one is good. The kick is good. The score, Buffalo 20, Chiefs nothing. With 5.38 remaining in this first half, it has been all Buffalo. Somebody other than Todd Haley has to be irritated. He has to do something about this. So this is a team that's flat right now. As you look at the Kansas City sideline, nobody's showing any emotion other than that guy right there, Todd Haley. You can't let a team like the Buffalo Bills come into your place and jump off to a 20 nothing start because you're playing sloppy football. This everyone's, is... everyone's got to take a deep breath. There's plenty of time left here. You've got 538 left in the half. Put a drive together. Get some points on the board before halftime. Go in and get a Gatorade to come out and play more inspired football in the second half. It's not that difficult. It has been a silent crowd here on the in the second quarter. Todd Haley in his third year as head coach of the Chiefs. Could be a critical third season in his four-year contract. Well, he's had a lot of change. 
A lot of change around the quarterback position to me is a concern. We talked about the different play callers, the fact that Bill Muir's calling plays now. Jim Zorn, who's new to the staff, he's learning the terminology and verbiage, and I think that could have an impact on Matt Castle. Lindell's kick, played by Aretas, he'll run it out. And he's tripped up across the 15-yard line. Taken down by Leotis McKeldon. Thursday, September the 22nd, see why TV Guide calls person of interest a must-see mystery. Emmy winner Michael Emerson and Jim Caviezel star premiering Thursday, September the 22nd, only CBS. Kansas City starting out at its 19-yard line. It has primarily been Jamal Charles at running back. A costly fumble in the last series. We've seen very little of Thomas Jones to this point. Here's Castle floating one that has dropped. Looked like McKelvin got a piece of it. Upset that he was not able to pick it off. The pass intended for Dwayne Bowe. Well, ironically, we're Chiefs are now having to throw the football. Nice job by Leotis McKelvin. He jumps that glance route. This is a timing and rhythm throw, and it looks like Matt Castle just a split second late. Hand off to McCluster. And he is bottled up across the 20 yard line. Barnett and Merriman on the tackle. We have heard the booing right from the start here in Kansas City. Absolutely. And, you know, this, Buffalo defense, they've gotten after it. They've been very physical. And the ironic thing is, is the Chiefs' number one rushing team a year ago, 29th in passing. They have an offensive imbalance, and now they're forced to throw the ball, not something they do as well as run. Castle throws, completes at the marker, has a first down. Catch made by Charles. So Castle is 7 for 11, although you don't have the feeling that he's been effective. You know, sometimes when you're struggling offensively, I think it's a good idea to go to the no huddle. I think it makes it more difficult for defenses to make substitutions for, to dial up all those blitzes. It can really help the quarterback when an offense is not in rhythm. Castle had the time, and then Charles has just cut down at the line. How difficult is it to run the no huddle when you have this new system of putting the plays in it might be a better thing for matt castle i mean matt castle probably knows the offense better than bill muir the guy who's calling the plays he's got a script on his sheet he's got some plays that he can go to he's got a personnel group that he's comfortable with second and long and castle out of the gun a cluster looking for that opening finds it to the 40 midfield and has run out at the Buffalo 46, 23-yard pickup. Drayton Florence able to run him out of bounds. Well, really nice job here. Look at the left side of the line. Albert gets the kick out. You see Dexter McCluster. He just flies through the hole. You want to get him on the second level of the defense. He can score from anywhere on the field. Now the 12-year veteran, Thomas Jones, former Jet, former Bear. Five times over a thousand yards. Back on the field. Inside handoff and Jones gets inside the 45 yard line. Stopped by Spencer Johnson, the right defensive end. George Wilson also involved. Jones in his second year with the Chiefs. Following 3,000 yard seasons with the Jets. A couple of years with the Bears. Originally a first round pick of Arizona, but it has primarily been Jamal Charles this afternoon and Charles back on the field. Just under three minutes to play in the first half. Charles stutter steps his way, has a first down and more. Beautiful run, he broke tackles, reaching down to the 30 in Buffalo territory. Jarris Bird was able to get the wraps on him. It's 14 yards for Charles. Well, some just great moves and good patience by Jamal Charles. And you always have to account for him winding runs back and then you've got to be able to make these tackles in the open field. He'll, he will run right through arm tackles. First down for Kansas City. Castle into the flat. 
Steve Breston with another Kansas City first down. Well, other than Dwayne Bow, they had mostly a pedestrian receiving group a year ago, and that's why they went out and acquired Stevie Breston. He's got to come in and help. They need more production from the other receivers. That's a 20-yard pickup. The ball at the 10, it's first and goal. Castle looking more comfortable again, completes. McCluster is bumped out, picked up four with just under two minutes to play. And this trips the Chiefs finally showing some signs. 75 yards on this drive, and they've done it on the ground. 71 yards the previous five drives. Yeah, they've shown some signs of life, and they've done it with a number of different backs in the game. We've seen all three, Thomas Jones, Jamal Charles, and Dexter McCluster. Second and goal, out at the six. Castle with a long look. Castle being rushed and then throws it away. Well, they didn't fool anybody there. Nice job by Buffalo. You look at Todd Haley. You wonder at some point whether he'll take over the play calling duties. It's a Kansas City team that went 10-6 and six last season, first in the AFC West. AFC's most improved team. They went from 4-12 and 12 to 10-6. and six. And then blown out on the wild card by the Baltimore Ravens. Have a poor preseason and obviously a very poor first half here this afternoon. Charles and McCluster are the running backs. Castle with time. Castle throws. Touchdown. Jamal Charles on the pass from Matt Castle. Six-yard touchdown pass. The Chiefs finally on the board. Well, nice job by Matt Castle giving him a chance. That was tight. You see right there, Aaron Williams trying to make that play. He had to fight through Dwayne Bowe in order to get there. Here's suck up. 11 plays, 81 yards. With a minute. 46 remaining in the half. Well, another good look at it right here. You see, this is a fine line between getting it done in this business. A perfect throw and catch gets it done. Well, they needed something good to happen before the half. We talked about it, Marv. When you go into halftime, a little bit of momentum. You feel better about yourself. You make some adjustments. You make some corrections. You come out here in the second half and try and get things going. I think it's going to be very difficult for Kansas City if they can't run the football. I mean, everything that they do offensively, the play action game and everything else, comes off the run. The minor coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. Join JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower for all the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. How about the Indianapolis Colts? Without a fellow by the name of Peyton Manning and Kerry Collins as the starting quarterback. Well, you, you got to think a much more different approach with Kerry Collins than Peyton Manning. You have to go all the way back to 1997, the last time someone other than Peyton Manning started a game for the Colts. And that man was Jim Harbaugh. This is Brad Smith on the return. A hesitation move, but his gang tackle just shy of the 15, led by Corey Greenwood. Well, tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern time, it'll be the U.S. Open men's final as the top two seeds square off. Rafael Nadal taking on Novak Djokovic, a rematch of last year's final. Coming up next, the women take center stage. Serena Williams facing Australian Samantha Storser in the women's final. About Serena Williams working her way back into it after kind of a quiet, quiet season for her. Injury hit. A minute 39 remaining. First half. Flag is thrown and the play is blown dead. And this crowd is 
Trying to get back, back into it. it. Yep. Ball starts. Offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty. First down. Well, it's called on Eric Pierce, the right tackle. I think he could have made this call on either Bell or Pierce. It looked look, look like both, both tackles, a little antsy there. And again, the crowd noise, when, when this, this crowd decides to get going, it makes it very difficult for the end man on the line of scrimmage. Set back to a first and 15. And they go to the inside handoff. Nothing there for Fred Jackson. Met by Sabi Piscatelli. Five-year man out of Oregon State, signed as a free agent from the Browns. Sabi Piscatelli getting a lot more snaps with the, the absence of Eric Berry. When you lose Eric Berry's run presence, he's such a great fit. It's a guy that wants to be down where the action is, down around the line of scrimmage. That's a significant loss for the Chiefs. Remains second and 15 at the 10. Final minute of the first half. It's Patrick able to complete and has well, close to a first down. Stevie Johnson on the reception. Let's see where they, they spot it. Just shy. The Chiefs took a timeout there. Todd Haley trying to get that ball back one more time. Look how far off you see Brandon Flowers playing there. Brandon Carr, my, my mistake, but too far off. You've got to get up on C.B. Johnson. You can't give him that much cushion, that much space. Johnson picked up 13. Four-year man from Kentucky. Does it a good job as a, a run-after-the-catch type possession receiver and had 82 catches last season. Yeah, he's exciting. I mean, he, he, he grew up and get the football. He plays a lot of confidence, a swagger to him. He really came on last season. And as Jan Gilly told us last night, he's excited about this receiving core. Not just Stevie Johnson, but Donald Jones, David Nelson, Roscoe Paris. He's got to stay healthy. He can really help him in the slot. Stevie Johnson there. Didn't do much his first couple of years, but boy, last year, the game began to slow down for him. Kansas City with one timeout remaining. Buffalo has two. And it's a third and one when we resume. Talking about the Chiefs' improvement last year, but they did take advantage, Rich, of a very favorable schedule. You still you have to win the games, but uh, that included games against the only two playoff teams. Different story this season, a much more difficult slate. The tight end Martin was in motion. Jackson trying to spin away, looking for that first down. And it is a first down. What a great effort. I mean, we've seen a number of missed tackles. You see Fred Jackson here. He's going to get hit and misses right there. Derek Johnson has to make that play. And then Brandon Flowers comes in and he gets carried. You've got to gang tackle these backs. They're tough tackles in the open field. Derek Johnson has to make that play. Time running out, though, in this first half, down to 10 seconds. And uh, that will wrap it. The Buffalo Bills with a surprising start following a very long 4-12 and season. They lead the Chiefs here in Kansas City 20 to seven back with the sprint halftime after this city marv albert with rich Gann. yes that uh, that score is correct surprising a lot of folks around the country buffalo just took command in that first half they really did marv and it started right in the opening kickoff they just uh, felt really comfortable they took advantage of some field position and turnovers the offenses looked sharp i think the defense the defense has played well kansas city finally got something going here late in the first half Matt Castle, the big run here by Dexter McCluster. He was spreading the ball around. Stevie Preston makes a big play. And finally, they get this big throw here to Jamal Charles for that touchdown. You look at the first half stats, turnovers really tell the story. It certainly points off of turnovers. You look at this 80 rushing yards from the Kansas City Chiefs. 
a lot of that coming on the last drive. They've got to get this running game going. They've got two very good backs in Jamal Charles and Thomas Jones, but they need touches. Quarterback stats, Fitzpatrick, 8 of 15, 125 yards, two touchdowns. Castle, 11 of 17 for 87. And that uh, late touchdown. You're looking at Brad Smith awaiting the kick to get things going in this second half. And Smith will stay right there, so they'll bring it out on the uh, touchback. I think if you're Ryan Fitzpatrick and Chan Gailey, nothing should change. No reason to get conservative. They came out. Some of these three, four wide receiver sets. They've got the backs out of the backfield. They came out throwing the football. And they ran when they wanted to, wanted to run the football. I think that that's what they have to continue to do in the second half. I think it's important for them to forget about the score. Just go out and do the things you did in the first half. Fred Jackson is the running back. For the most part, it has been a single setback. Off the play fake. It is David Nelson who has had himself a superb day. Another catch by Nelson. Piscatelli making the stop. A first down for Buffalo on a 16-yard hookup. What's happening is, is there's a lot of play action on first down, and you're going to see Sabby Piscatelli. He's going to have his eyes in the backfield, and you can't do that. You cannot take your eyes off of that receiver. Sabby Piscatelli getting worked right now. First down up at the 37-yard line. The tight end Martin in motion. Jackson finding a hole. So tough to tackle and has a first down. A beautiful run by Fred Jackson gliding his way through the free safety. Kendrick Lewis finally able to get to him, but Jackson goes for 14. We talk about gap security, and we talk about getting him on the ground. I mean, you're just missing too many tackles. Kelly Gray's got to make that stop. The missed tackles starting to pile up now for this Kansas City defense. Kelly Gregg is a very good player in the middle of that defense. Extremely strong. Get that low center of gravity. It's a good job reacting to blocks quickly, but he's got to make that stop. Greg side is a free agent after nine years with Baltimore. And Jackson trying to leap over Ali. But this time he's he stopped Lawson three on the play. Getting back to the quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, as uh, we see the handoff from Fitzpatrick to Jackson. Ryan was telling us last night his dad works for a missile manufacturer defense contractor, but he said his father likes to claim that he is a rocket scientist. <laughs> uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick, Ryan is, is just kidding. Yeah, I think that uh, you know it's not a bad deal when your son winds up going to Harvard and he, <laughs> he's playing in the National Football League. He was kidding us last night. Some of his buddies are on Wall Street making more than he is. Second and 13, and Fitzpatrick with the completion again to David Nelson. Nelson, a second-year man out of Florida, side as a free agent last year, had 31 catches, three touchdowns, goes for 10 on the play. A big target at 6'5", 215 pounds. I think you bring up some great points, Marv, about this organization and how they put their trust in Ryan Fitzpatrick. You know, it's tough when it's not your team. And I think that was always the issue with him. This is his first time in his seven-year career. He enters the season as a starting quarterback. And I think now he can speak up. Now he can talk about the things he wants to see in this offense. He's looking at a third and eight. Getting nice protection to a point. Ali, who has been a sack machine, 14 and a half to lead the AFC. A year ago, comes up with his first in Kansas City's first sack of the day. Well, they're moving him around. We saw him on the, the right side. Now we see him on the left side of the defense. And that's what you want to do. If it's not working against Demetrius Bells, then go over there and take a couple shots at Eric Pierce. He is your best pass rusher with 14 and a half sacks a year ago. Here's Brian Mormon for the third time. Arenas is back. Mormon just did get it away. And Arenas lets it carry into the end zone. So they bring it out 
to the 20 yard line. 54 yard punt. When we come back, Matt Castle and the Chiefs back to the. Kansas City Chiefs have not started outside their own 20 yard line throughout the game. They're starting out once again at the 20 on the, on the touchback. Buffalo with a 20 to 7 lead. Shade over three minutes gone by in this third quarter. Fake handoff to Charles. Nice play. Hope on the reception has a first down. Matt Castle with the successful play action. Jarris Bird making the stop. It's an 11-yard pickup. Well, you got to sell the action. That's just what Matt Castle does here. Good ball extension. You can see Kelsey on the back end. He gets fooled. Both teams running a lot of these nakeds and bootlegs with these quarterbacks getting out on the edge. Kansas City first down at their 30-yard line. You got man to man covers a lot of it today. One-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. Matt Castle has it if he'll just take it. Short set, and it's batted back to him. Well, these quick three-step throws, you've got to get their hands down. See Chris Kelsey there. Actually, that's Wilson. Right on the end of the line of scrimmage. It's tough when they're unaccounted for when you have that quick three-step throw. George Wilson showing us his leaping ability. It's a loss of four. Get on the roll. Once again, the tight end, Leonard Pope, able to make the catch, but not much there. And what we're seeing is we're, this is unusual when you look at Kansas City. They're starting to repeat some plays. We just ran this play a couple plays ago. The stretch, and then the naked offense back to Pope, the tight end. This time, Kelsey does a nice job rallying back. We always talk about plays that look the same that are different. We're seeing Kansas City run some of the same plays we saw in the first half. Third and 16. Castle over the middle, it's dropped. Wayne Bowl, the intended receiver. So the punting team comes on. Yeah, this is something that Dwayne Bowe did a much better job of early in his career. He dropped a lot of balls. See off the play action fake. I think, he, I think he hears some footsteps. He takes a little bit of peek there, knowing that right in the middle is Nick Barnett. He's just waiting for him. It's going to hurt regardless. You've got to make the catch. Dustin Colquitt. And Roscoe Parrish comes up for it. Calls for the fair catch. Buffalo back to the offense. 34-yard punt by Colquitt. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. KFC Popcorn Chicken. Today tastes so good. And by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Back in Kansas City, they call him Master Kim. That is Joe Kim, a martial arts expert working for the Chiefs. Working with players prior to the start of the game. Defensive line coach Anthony Pleasant, a one-time Cleveland Brown, was aware of Master Kim, who had worked with Brown's players, so recommended him to KC General Manager Scott Pioli. Kim has been effective in improving hand-eye coordination, and Scott Pioli says Master Kim thinks differently than we do, brings a, a unique perspective. And maybe looking for more of that unique perspective here this afternoon. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> yes. No, I think it's great. First and 10 from the 41 yard line. Jackson finding a hole. Jackson with a beautiful run. Goes for 24. Fred Jackson. Well, they're doing a really nice job on the left side of that offensive line. Andy Levitri, Demetrius Bell. Get the double team. The guard comes in and kicks out as does the tight end and then Fred Jackson not a huge hole there but he just squeezes up inside it they've had a lot of success running the ball behind the left side of that offensive line 14 carries 81 yards for Jackson first out at the Chiefs 
35. And here is Jackson trying the other side. And always gets a couple more. They thought they had him at the 30. Ends up with a nine-yard pickup. Well, they're making contact. They're just pushing these piles back. And as you watch this Buffalo offensive line, I had a major concern about this crew coming out of preseason, but they're doing a nice job. You see the guard pull and kick out. Look at, look at the push. And look at Fred Jackson falling forward at the end of runs. Kansas City has missed a number of tackles at or around the line of scrimmage. Second and one, C.J. Spiller now checks in. And Spiller looking for the first down is his stop. Stack him up. Glenn Dorsey, the right defensive end, stopping Spiller, the second-year player out of Clemson, first-round draft pick, ninth overall last season. Well, I think a big story today has been the starting field position. You see right here, Buffalo, their own 42. Kansas City has been backed up the entire day. A lot of that special teams and also turnovers. Buffalo has really benefited from the fact that their defense and special teams have created some turnovers in field position. All right, here's Brad Smith coming out of the Wildcat formation. And Smith once again picks up the first down. Javon Belcher making the stop. So once again, Smith coming, coming in at a second or third and one and is able to succeed. He's going to have to start throwing it. You see right here, they try and fake a little bit of a counter action. He looks away, and the guard comes back around to kick back out. But they've got to be able to throw it as well. You're going to start to see more red helmets up around the line of scrimmage when Brad Smith lines up in the backfield. They have to throw it from that formation as well. First out of the 22-yard line. Ryan Fitzpatrick, back at quarterback. Empty backfield. They've got five re eligible receivers on the line of scrimmage. Fitzpatrick able to complete again at the tight end, Scott Chandler, who has had himself a career day. Kendrick Lewis makes the tackle. Fourth catch for Chandler. It's a first and goal at the six. And Chandler has done a really nice job working against these tight ends. Oh, it's almost as, as if he's become Ryan Fitzpatrick's go-to guy. And look at the separation there. That's Kendrick Lewis. He's got the size advantage. And certainly, Ryan Fitzpatrick giving him opportunities today. At six foot seven, he has seven inches on Lewis. Four catches, 52 yards. First and goal at the six for Buffalo. Jackson found the hole, picked up additional yardage. John McGraw has been playing for the injured Eric Berry. Finally made the stop. The ball is placed down at the two to be a second and goal. You know, as I look at this, the first half, and now we're, as we're into the third quarter, I think conditioning is a factor in this game. You know, I've watched this very closely. I've watched the sidelines. A lot of chief players sitting down on the sidelines, making a lot of substitutions. Buffalo, to me, looks like the more conditioned football team. They have looked very, very sharp through two and a half quarters. Temperature here about 78 degrees. They say it's going to go over 80. Hand off. Jackson. And they're able to stop him. Glenn Dorsey makes the tackle. Well, sometimes you can just hear a good hit. A good hit. You don't have to see it. Hmm. Couple of them, and that's what they need to do more of gang tackle at or around the line of scrimmage. Derek Johnson's had some opportunities. You see Romeo Cornell there trying to get a stop out of his defense. Third and goal just inside the one. Back comes Brad Smith. And again, he lines up as the quarterback. Smith looks to pick his way, but the play is whistle dead and a flag down. Ball start, offense number 76, five-yard penalty, third down. That is Chad Reinhardt, the left guard. There you get one of the problems when you take Ryan Fitzpatrick out of the game is, is the cadence. You know, the 
offensive line used to hearing Ryan Fitzpatrick all the time. The you bring in Brad Smith, a little bit different cadence there, and you get a, a costly f f false start inside the five. Very few penalties called here today. Buffalo second, Kansas City hit with only one. Third and goal back at the sixth house. C.J. Spiller returns to the backfield. He is in motion, ends up in the slot. And again, flag toss. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Too much time taken. Well, that should, never, that should never happen. Chan Gale has done, done a good job getting the plays in early. They got a false start on the previous play and then a delay a game. And now you put yourself in a bad situation. You look at that script down there as he's calling plays. Not a lot of plays for third long in the red zone. The ball is back at the 11. Third and goal at the 11. Just under four and a half remaining in the third. Fitzpatrick for the end zone. Touchdown, a wide open Scott Chandler. That is his second touchdown catch of the day. Fifth reception for 63 yards overall. Well, you see him right here. He's just going to go to the post. Nobody covers him. They've got a blown assignment. You see Tom Bahali, Javier Arenas comes. No one covers Scott Chandler down the middle of the field. Communication errors kill you in this part of the field. Ryan Lindell puts it through. Eight plays, 59 yards in just under six minutes. The Bills extend to a 27-7 lead here in Kansas City. It is now a 27-7 lead for Buffalo over Kansas City. And how about Scott Chandler, who was having a career day. He was picked up from San Diego late last season. Arena saw the return for Kansas City. Stutter steps his way across the 20 yard line. Corey McIntyre makes the stop. We'll take a quick break. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Walmart. Save money, live better. Walmart. And by Autotrader.com. Now find brand spanking new cars and special offers on Autotrader.com. Well, as we go back and look at the touchdown, clearly a missed assignment. We know Chandler is going to the post, and we know Tom Bahali is going to rush. We also know that someone has the tight end in coverage. Is it Arenas or is it Lewis? Both Arenas blitzes, and Lewis has looked like he's looking for the crosser. No one covers the tight end to the post. Missed assignments, mental errors, absolutely hurting the Kansas City defense. Chiefs will start out from their... 22-yard line, Castle with a bullet up of the 25. Three-yard pickup, Kerry Colbert on the catch. Well, they're going no huddle, and I like it. I, I think they need to create a sense of urgency with this group. Castle to get out of the uh, shotgun. That's Charles. He had nowhere to go. Now Charles turned back by strong safety Brian Scott. So here are the Chiefs in a third and seven. Well, George Edwards, the defensive corner, he's done a nice job. And I think the other thing is the corners have played well. Leotis McKelvin and Drayton Florence, not a lot of big plays down the field in the passing game for Kansas City. And now Castle will look to go deep. And uh, too deep intended to Dwayne Bowe. It is three and out. And again, the Chiefs are hearing the booze. Looks like he's a little late with the throw. And by the time Matt Castle got back to Dwayne Bow, the safety was there to help. You're going to see a little bit of a double move. He stops and then he, then he takes off again. Look at the safety coming over the top. You see Wilson there. Matt Castle trying to get that one up and down in the hole. Dustin Colquitt back at his 10. 
Roscoe Parrish awaiting the punt. Parrish to midfield. Made a nice move. Successful in taking to the outside. Good return by Parrish to Mario Williams. Is able to knock him out of bounds. 27-yard return. As I said, Marv, I wouldn't be surprised to see more big plays early in the season in the kicking game. The thing I like about this, Roscoe Paris, very decisive. He comes up and catches this one. And you're going to see a number of poor angles and missed tackles again. You've got a lot of inexperienced players covering kicks, rookies and first-year players. They didn't do it in college. They didn't get a chance to work on it in the spring because of the lockout. We're seeing the, the issues that they're having here today. Three years ago, Parrish led the NFL in punt return average. Fitzpatrick off play action. Nicely done for a first down. The catch by Stevie Johnson right at the marker. An 11-yard advance. Well, they're just turning these tight ends and these receivers loose. You see these linebackers, their eyes are in the backfield. Meanwhile, Justin Houston behind him is Stevie Johnson. Who was that guy yesterday in our conversation with head coach Chan Galley questioning the tight ends? Rich Gannon, Buffalo. right it here. It was. I said, I've looked at a lot of film over the last two years. I can't find a tight end making a play in this offense. And now Chris Chandler making me look silly. Not that you were incorrect. I just called him Chris instead of Scott. I don't even know these tight ends here in Buffalo. The catch made by Donald Jones, but lost a yard on the play. I think this is a big story. Barb, if Chan Gailey can get some production out of the tight end in this offense, you see Scott Chandler there, that really helps them on the perimeter. It helps Stevie Johnson. It's going to help Donald Jones. It's going to help Fred Jackson in the running game. He's had an outstanding day. I like the way he runs routes. As you said, the size certainly doesn't help. Hurt, but doesn't hurt. Chandler originally a fourth-round draft pick of the San Diego Chargers. Second down and 12. Fitzpatrick throwing in zone and too far for Donald Jones. We get a good look at Scott Chandler. I like how they're utilizing him in this offense today. They've done it with some play action. He's beat linebackers. He's worked on safeties. You see a little pivot route here. Look at the size. It's six foot seven. What a great target for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Boy, you love that. Just some confidence. Some confidence starting to develop in your young tight end. Chandler out of Bedford, Texas in his third NFL season. He played his college ball at Iowa. Third and long. Fitzpatrick. Beautiful stop and go move by Johnson. Able to spin. And has another Buffalo first down. Kendrick Lewis on the coverage. Well, I think this is the hardest route to defend if you're a cornerback. You see Carr there. He gets the jam. It's a back shoulder throw. Look at Stevie Johnson use his hands at the top of that route. But if you're Brandon Carr, you've got to get your eyes around and find that throw. That's a very, you're playing press man-to-man -man coverage. And the Chiefs play a lot of it in this scheme. It's a very difficult route to defend. That was good for 15. First and goal at the seven. Here's Jackson. We're gonna get Scott Chandler back in the game. Where's the tight end? He's standing over there on the sidelines. What do you, there he comes. Now you're calling that, for the tight end. I'm calling for the tight end. And what did Chan tell us last night? I think this, this, this Chandler kid can make some plays in the red zone. Well, he's made a bunch of them today. And if you're Kansas City, you better find him. You better locate 84. Better get a good cover guy on him. Go with an offset eye on the backfield. C.J. Spiller joining Fred Jackson. Now Spiller goes to the slot on the right. Fitzpatrick fires. Touchdown. And this time it's Donald Jones. Fourth touchdown pass for Ryan Fitzpatrick, which equals a career high. 
Well, he has looked really sharp, Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's made some great decisions. He's actually got the tight end running a little stick route. He's so much attention on the tight end, they don't feel Donald Jones in the back of the end zone. Watch the tight end. He's going to run the stick route. Right behind him comes Donald Jones in that hole before the safety can get over there. Very good anticipation by Ryan Fitzpatrick. Lindell with the extra point. 14 seconds remaining in the third, and the Bills lead the Chiefs 34. Somewhat clever signage. Do you think he wrote that before the game or during the game? I don't think he had the nerve before the game. There's a lot of enthusiasm and great expectations before the game, but it just, who would have thought, 34 to 7 as we get ready for the fourth quarter. All right, here's Dexter McCluster. Broke a tackle. Works his way to the 30-yard line. The kicker, Ryan Lindell, makes the stop. It's a 35-yard return with time running down here in the third quarter. You can watch fantasy football today for game time player news and active updates to help set your lineup. You can chat with our experts every Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern at cbssports.com slash live. Only six seconds remaining. Third quarter. It has been a disastrous home opener for the Kansas City Chiefs. And Castles pass off the mark. They were looking for a flag with Charles, the intended receiver. It's covered by Barnett. Just two seconds to go here on the third. It's been all Buffalo. Nine first downs. Kansas City only one here on this third quarter. Castle off the pump. Throws deep downfield and it's nearly intercepted. Brayton Florence made a good play on it. It is incomplete, and that is the end of the third quarter. The Bills 34, Chiefs 7 will return to Kansas City after this message and a word from your local station. From the Kansas City Chief point of view, not a pretty line score. No, it really isn't. Just three completions to wide receivers today for Matt Castle. And uh, Castle does complete, but shy of the first down. He connects with Steve Breston, the one-time Arizona Cardinal. And go for it on fourth down. Picked up six. It'll be fourth and four. Well, they're already having some communication issues. You've got the punter running on the field. You've got players coming on and off. You've got a lot of uncertainty at the line of scrimmage. We got the rookie, yep. Marcel Darius. Yep, that's a, that's his welcome to the National Football League. On fourth Outside. down, you've got to be patient. Defense number 99. It is a first down. Marcel is the highest draft pick in Bills team history since back in 1985, when Buffalo selected a fellow by the name of Bruce Smith out of Virginia Tech. Yeah, they can't they count on him for some big things. Oh, I thought he was the most complete defensive lineman in the draft. He's going to be a very, very good player for a long time. Out of Alabama, third overall pick. There's Castle. Picked off. Intercepted. Florence with the pick. And Buffalo will have another opportunity. The return of 31 yards by Drake. Florence. Well, Matt Castle should know better. You've got to see out in front of throws. This is a two deep coverage by Buffalo. And I want you to keep an eye on Drayton Florence. He's going to drop knowing that he's got help from the safety. And they're going to run this little angle, this deep corner route. Drayton Florence is going to fall right off on it. You see him right here. He's going to fall right back in. And you've got, if you're Matt Castle, you've got to feel that corner drop off. 
and fall back in on that play. Rich, how about two fumbles and an interception against them in Kansas City? Fred Jackson is the running back. Here's Jackson picking his way to the 25. All right, let's go to our CBS studios for an update on Atlanta and Chicago. Hey, Marv, Chicago not prominently in a lot of people's talk, but Boomer. How about some more defensive touchdowns right here? This is going to be Matt Ryan putting the ball on the ground, ball's flopping around, and Ryan Erlach is going to pick it up. They are all over the Atlanta Falcons, 30-6. to That in the fourth quarter. Back to Marv Albert. All right, thanks, guys. Second and seven at the... 25-yard line, Fred Jackson showing all kinds of angles as he cuts inside the, the 15, tripped up by John McGraw, so Jackson with an 11-yard pickup. This is going to be an uncomfortable meeting tomorrow when they watch this film, the defensive meeting. Look at all the missed tackles, the overrunning plays, another missed tackle. They have not done a good job containing Fred Jackson. 20 carries, 112 yards for Jackson. Now Spiller joins him in the backfield. First down of the 15. He's wide open. And he has him. Jackson. This is really surprising to see. You know, we talked to Chan Gailey last night about Romeo Cornell in this defense. And what did he say? He said they're fundamentally sound. They're not overly complex, but they don't make a lot of mistakes. And today we've seen just too many mistakes from this Kansas City defense. This is a veteran group, a group that's played together last year. They're turning tight ends loose, the backs in the flat, they're missing tackles. Really some sloppy football. They don't look like they're ready to play. If you made the uh, the statement earlier, they looked flat, and that was early. That was back in the first half. Spiller to the outside. Spiller, touchdown! C.J. Spiller turning on the right side, takes it in from nine yards out. The blowout continues early in the fourth quarter. Well, this is good to see from C.J. Spiller. I mean, he's got the speed and the elusiveness to make people miss. And when Fred Jackson gets tired, you bring in a fresh set of legs and C.J. Spiller, he has got tremendous speed. He just learned, he just needs to learn how to hold on to the football and to get better in the passing game. to get more reps in this offense. And you saw that note, his first career rushing touchdown. They're headed to the exits here in Kansas City. Not a good one for the head coach, Todd Haley, and his team. You're watching the NFL on CBS. A moment ago, C.J. Spiller, the second-year player from Clemson, taking it in from nine yards out, his first NFL rushing touchdown, and it's been a terrific day for the feature back, Fred Jackson. Here's McCluster. McCluster got things off in a tough way for the Chiefs. On that fumble on the, the opening kickoff, Ryan Scott was able to get to McCluster right here. Not too late to play NFL.com Fantasy Football, the First and only one with in-game video. It's free and it's easy. Sign up today at NFL.com slash fantasy. You could be feeling pretty good if you got Ryan Fitzpatrick on your fantasy team today, huh? Or even Fred Jackson. Did you mention Ryan Fitzpatrick? I did we, not. Yeah, Thank you for reminding me. Mark. We do a little segment prior to the start <laughs> the of the update. game. And Rich, I know you try to pinpoint who fantasy players should check out. I did not hear Ryan's name. Charles. Finding an opening across the 20-yard line. Danny Batten, the backup linebacker. That's one on guy. The that's one guy ahead of my fantasy update, Jamal Charles. And well, that's like a gimme. I it mean, was come on. nine for 57 yards. Who would have thought they've got they've gotten so far behind that they've really taken right. the game out of the hands of Jamal Charles? Under normal conditions, that's a guy you say, hey, he no question. He averaged over six yards a carry a year ago. And 1,400 yards. I thought that was a short, short pick. 
Second and five of the 21. Here's Castle. Catch made. And a spin move to pick up the first down. The cluster on the reception. Well, I think, you know, regardless of the situation, there's still some positives you can get out of this. This is an opportunity to work on your, your no huddle, to work on your two minute, to work on the passing game, an area where they've got to get better. So much of the passing game was about Dwayne Bow last year, and Jeremy Urban and Stevie Breston, Terrence Copper. These, these guys need reps in this system. This is Charles stopped at the line. If you're a Kansas City Chief, you look around the stands, this looks like an early preseason crowd and it has to be depressing. It really is, and it's incredible. You know, I played here for four years in the 90s when this place was really rocking, and when we came into the stadium today, it really had that feel. But boy, just uh, that opening kickoff really took the crowd out of the game. Second and 10, the, the catch made up of the 34 by the cluster. Picked up six. Chiefs have the terrible preseason 0-4, lost their final preseason contest 20 to 19 at green bay and surprisingly todd haley kept much of his starters in the game into the fourth quarter he just felt they were not in they're not we're not ready for the season yeah I, but I, it cost it really did well, i think you bring up a great point Mar, the fact that i think those preseason games mean something i'm not suggesting you have to go out and try and win them all but you've got to come out of preseason with some confidence and they didn't as a football team they're 0 and 4 you look at the paper this morning here's a guy that's coming off of a 10 and 6 season and now they say he's on the clock because of an 0-4 start of the preseason. I mean, that's ridiculous. But the fact of the matter is, is that they had a much different approach in the preseason. He said that how other people do it is no concern of ours. He was really, he felt like they've had it, they had to work on their conditioning, and he really played the starters into the fourth quarter because he was concerned about that. And today, it's really showing. Parrish had that the good return last time, but this time... Stopped across the 25 by Demario Williams. 40-yard punt, just a two-yard. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by FedEx. We understand you need reliable shipping solutions. FedEx. Sprint. All together now. And by Dodge. Visit your local Dodge dealer today. With Buffalo in front, 41-7. Tyler Thigpen, the one-time Kansas City Chief, has come on for Ryan Fitzpatrick. The handoff goes to Johnny White, looking for North Carolina, breaking free for a first down, reaching out near the 40-yard line. Kendrick Lewis on the stop. It's a 13-yard advance. Well, I thought Ryan Fitzpatrick had a very efficient day. Made some great throws, particularly in the red zone. He got it started with this tight end throw to Scott Chandler. Came right back with another big throw and a great effort by Stevie Johnson. Tight end again, and of course, the back of the end zone, he finds Donald Jones on a four-yard touchdown reception in the third quarter. The number 17 of 25, 208 yards, four touchdowns to equal a career high, and White is stopped back behind the line. Ryan Fitzpatrick, the, the one thing that really hurt him a year ago were the turnovers, and I think that's something that they've got to get straightened out. It was great to see four touchdowns today, no interceptions. He said he's got to work on his consistency. Well, I would say he had a very consistent performance today. Rich, among Buffalo's many problems last season, they were the worst in the league in turnover differential. Today they are plus three, gathering in Two fumbles, they have the one interception. Here's White. Johnny White to the 39. Tyson Jackson, the left defensive end, makes the stop for Kansas City. That was the, I think it was the big story a year ago. You think about why they lost 12 games. Two big reasons. They couldn't stop the run, and offensively they turned it over more than any other team in football. 39 offensive giveaways, 20 of them coming from that guy right there. And he's a bit of a risk taker. And I love him. He, he's got the... You know, he's got that mentality he can make all the throws, but that's an area where if he can just be a little bit better, I think the Bills can really surprise some people. Roscoe Parrish splitting wide to the right. The running back is Johnny White. Sam Gailey able to do some shuffling here in the fourth quarter. White, the ball carry. 
And this is good. You get a chance to get, to get some of the younger players on the field. You mentioned Tyler Thigpen. He gets some work, which is important. He needs to play, and certainly some of these young backs, a guy like Johnny White. You see Chris Hairston, the fourth-round pick, playing a little bit of offensive line. And you can see they've been heading to the exits from early third quarter on, and they are... They're not hanging around. They are leaving the area. No, they're going to go out and tailgate and have more fun in the parking lot. This is really disappointing. It's just that I just was not happy with the effort or the finish today by the Chiefs. This is Brian Mormon. So it'll come out to the 20, but a penalty marker is down. It's a 57-yard punt if it holds up. We're down to six and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. What do you suppose Todd Haley says to his team after this one? I mean, where do you begin? There's no foul on the play. The words from Todd will not include good and job. <laughs> good effort. The Chiefs will start out from their 20-yard line. Kansas City in the second half has punted three times. They've been intercepted once. So as bad as the first half was, it is worse thus far here in the second as McCluster trying to get it to the outside, and he was handcuffed. A programming reminder, Tuesdays this fall on CBS, there's only one new drama to remember. It's Unforgettable. Premieres Tuesday, September the 20th, only CBS loss of one on that play by McCluster second down and 11 as we come up on six minutes to go here in the fourth McCluster Called down by George Wilson. He did pick up five Marv Albert Rich Gannon were at Arrowhead Kansas City a bright sunshine day a terrific day for these Buffalo Bills they looked really good on defense, I and mean, they've been really impressed. They've tackled well. They've not given up the big run or the, even the big play in the passing game. And they've gotten some pressure on Matt Castle. They flushed him out of the pocket and make him try to make him make some difficult throws on the run. That pass intended for Bo. A flag is down on the backfield. Offense number 73. Penalties decline. Fourth down. He's Jeez. called on the uh, right guard, John Azamoa. I think what Kansas City needs to realize is that past success is no indication of future results. In fact, with it, I think, comes greater expectations, and certainly that's what exists here in Kansas City from these fans. And after you go 10-6 and six and you host a home playoff game, to come out here today and be as flat as they were, and it's just there's, there's absolutely no explanation for it, and there's no excuse. Sixth punt of the day coming up for Dustin Colquitt. Roscoe Parrish is back. And he is hit down immediately. 41-7 Buffalo will be right back. Well, Buffalo fans may recall three years ago here in, in Kansas City, back in November 2008, the Bills scored six touchdowns in a game against the Chiefs. Leonis McKelvin returning a Tyler Fitpen interception for a score, one of five. Chief turnovers and Trent Edwards ran for two TDs and threw for two more. Bills won it in a wild one, 54, 31 second most points in Bills history, most allowed in Kansas City history. Johnny White gets the call, picks up three, met by Justin Houston. 41 points here this afternoon, the most in a season opener for the Bills since September 21st, 1975, on a game against. The New York Jets. That's the electric company. Joe Ferguson, Joe Ferguson at quarterback, and Reggie McKenzie, the big offensive line. O.J. Simpson ran for a lot of yards and scored a lot of points that season. Second and six. Brad Smith back in the game. Now looking to throw. Smith fires deep downfield, and it is picked off. It is intercepted by Brandon Flowers. So Brad Smith in as the quarterback, coming on for Tyler Thickpen, going deep, 
in his first pass attempt look at his intercept. Look at Ryan Fitzpatrick. You can't believe it. You know, you ask yourself, why are they throwing the ball in this situation? I think for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, I think it's a, a bit of a tendency break. You've got to put this on film and show people that you will throw the ball out of the Wildcat. And on top of that, he needs work at this. We asked Chan Gilly last night, well, we know he can run the ball, but what kind of a passer is he? He said, well, he's, he's a little, little shaky in the beginning of the preseason, but he is getting better. And remember now, Brad Smith is the third quarterback on the roster for the Bills. He threw that one like a wide receiver, didn't he? And a little quarterback in college at, at Missouri. First turnover committed by Buffalo. Dexter McCluster. Let's take him a shot. That's right. <laughs> I like Brad Smith. I think he's going to be a great uh, addition. I think, I, I think that's one of those. Oh, he's a great guy. But uh, let's go. <laughs> well, he's not. Re is he really a quarterback? Is he a receiver? But you know what? He spent some. He spends his time in that quarterback meeting room. So I guess we have to certainly call him a quarterback. But he is really going to help this football team. They need more explosive players. Brad Smith is certainly one of them. First and ten at the. 23, here's Castle and to the left flat. Finding Kerry Colbert, six-year man out of the University of Southern Cal. Picked up six as we approach four minutes to play in what has been a blowout. A very happy opening performance for the Buffalo Bills. on the reception well if you're the bills defensively i think the two big areas of concern were stopping the running game they did a great job of that with jamal charles held him to 56 yards and dwayne bow 15 touchdowns a year ago just two catches today third and four at the 27 castle being chased and just throws it away Oh, they had a missed assignment there. Matt Cassa anticipating one of those receivers. I think it's Dwayne Bow to come back for that under screen. You can see him right there talking to the, the coaching staff. Well, they have not looked sharp. You can see the frustration from Matt Castle. Rich, what kind of week is this for the Kansas City Chiefs? Looking ahead, a game at Detroit, an improved Lions team. Then at San Diego. Then back home from Minnesota. They play four of their first six games on the road, which makes today's performance look even worse. They've got a lot of work ahead of them. There's a lot of mistakes when you put the film on tomorrow morning. Offensively, defensively, in the kicking game, they were just not good in any phase of the game. And they will spot it at the 29-yard line. And... Uh, I want to point out we're extremely excited to introduce a new segment entitled Going Deep. And each week, Rich will come up with fascinating facts, many of which are related to football, some perhaps not, that uh, we'll feel better about learning this type of information. What do you have for us here? How about that wedding band on that, on that left ring finger? You can see it right there. Not many quarterbacks, not many players in the National Football League actually wearing the ring. He started wearing it last year. He can't take it off. He said his wife, Liza, would kill him. <laughs> we look at that ring last night. It's got some dings in it. I think if he keeps on playing the way he is right now, we could maybe see a ring on that other finger. Whoa. Holding. Hey, Offense he looks really good. Johnny White, the ball carrier, but a First down. flag down. It's on Chris Hairston, the left tackle. So there you have it, today's edition of Going Deep, which is thoroughly unsponsored. <laughs> I think this is just a. I think this is just a, a sequence for you to make fun of me. Is that what this is all no. about? I feel that it can be very educational. Yeah, I hope you learned something there. But, hey, how about that though? Huh? Not many guys wear it. I, I think I always worried if you get hit in that hand, that would that would hurt. But uh, he seems to feel pretty good about it. I know his wife certainly appreciates it. Now it's too late. He can't he take it off now. He cannot take it off. Again, it is white. Mario Williams is there to make the stop, a loss of two on the play. We mentioned the 
Chiefs' upcoming schedule, which is not a pretty picture. As for Buffalo, next week they're home for the Raiders, followed by a home game against New England, and the Bills have lost 15 straight to the Patriots. Their last win against New England, opening day 2003 in Buffalo. Well, we're going to find out early just how much better this run defense is. They open up today with the number one rushing team in football a year ago. Next week, they have the Raiders, who are the second best, and I think they can really build on this performance. I think it's about gaining confidence defensively for the Bills. Ooh. Once again, it's, it's White taking a hard hit. The Mario Williams was right there, and that will take us to the two-minute warning. Buffalo 41, Kansas City 7. Wednesday, September the 21st on CBS, new night, new blood. Ted Danson joins CSI, the season premiere, Wednesday, September the 21st, only CBS. Two minutes to play. Buffalo from the 19-yard line. Johnny White who has seen quite a bit of activity here in the fourth quarter. He is a rookie from North Carolina, stopped by Kendrick Lewis, the free safety. White picking up five on that play. Yeah, just trying to run this clock out, get back on the buses and head to the airport and head home after a big win. This is, a, I think this is a big win for the Bills to be able to open on the road. Chan Gailey be able to come back to Kansas City, a place that, that wasn't so kind to him a couple of years ago. And remember now, Chan Gailey started the season in 2009 as the offensive coordinator on Todd Haley's staff. Todd fired him right before the start of the season. And Chan said that uh, he'd be lying if he said this one didn't, didn't mean a little something more to him. He was the offensive guru for Bill Cower. Pittsburgh Steelers compares what Brad Smith is hoping to do in Buffalo with what he was able to do with Cordell Stewart with the Steelers. He's a very innovative play caller. I think his personnel usage, his formations, does a great job job utilizing the talents that he has. You think about Fred Jackson and Stevie Johnson, and now I think we can throw into that uh, our new our new star in, in Buffalo, Scott Chandler, the tight end, who had an outstanding day. Of course, the performance of Ryan Fitzpatrick was spectacular. So Mormon back to punt from his 10. Arenas on the return. And will cross the 30, a 59-yard punt, 16-yard return. Chris White makes the stop for Buffalo. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS rolling out doubleheader action. The Jaguars open up by taking on the Jets. Raiders face the Bills, or the Chiefs at the Lions, and then Phillip Rivers and the Chargers take on Tom Brady. And the Patriots check your local listings, beginning with J.B., Dan, Coach, Shannon, and Boomer. On the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. Jackie Battle getting the call. Four-year man out of University of Houston, stopped by Kirk Morrison. He goes for three with 45 seconds to play. Well, frustrating day. You see Bill Muir there. I think he's a very good football coach, Todd Haley. It's just Hey, it didn't look good in the preseason. We were at practice on Friday. They started a number of periods over. It just wasn't what we anticipated. And again, I think practice week really kind of tells a story sometimes. I, I don't know that this team was really ready to play today. Battle once again. So the Buffalo Bills with a commanding 41-7 victory over the Kansas City Chiefs here in Kansas City. For KC, the second worst home loss in franchise history. They lost to Pittsburgh 45 nothing back in 1976. Coming up next, the U.S. Open Women's Final. So for Rich Gannon, this is Marv Albert saying so long.